Hey guys, this is my video looking at what I'm predicting should be your best places to be focusing your revision for the A-Level Chemistry AQA 2024 Paper 1. So what we want to know is what can we expect in this year's Paper 1 for A-Level Chemistry AQA. Please remember all the way through that I'm not psychic. I don't write the exams. I do write predictive papers to help you practice, but you should always try and make sure that your revision is thorough uh, rather than just trying to cram in a last few topics. But I'm gonna split this video into a couple of parts. The first part, we're going to look at the things that you should always revise in paper one. And paper one is generally quite predictable for AQA in terms of topics, not always the questions. And then we will look at some topics which I think are quite likely to come up this year just on the basis of all the previous questions in the last sort of five years of papers. And at the end, just give you some hints as to where you can find some more help on the website to help you revise for these topics. So always revise these things while they always come up of course time of flight mass spectrometry make sure that you can do this from different directions so make sure that you can calculate the mass of the iron from just the atomic mass in kilograms using Avogadro's number make sure that you are confident in rearranging your speed distance time equations so that you can find any of those okay so that you can find the speed you can find the distance or you can find the time of flight. Born Harbour cycles, obviously, going to come up. But again, because they're getting a little less predictable over the years, don't just rote learn. This is a Born Harbour cycle. It goes up, 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 down, 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 and just like le rote learn everything. Make sure that you can label those enthalpy changes confidently, specifically. Okay, make sure that you can name them properly. Make sure that you can write equations for the separate enthalpy changes, i.e. atomization, ionization, electron affinity, lattice energy, make sure that you can confidently write balanced equations and know your definitions. Kc and Kp, it's bound to come up here or it's gonna come up in paper two or paper three, or sometimes it comes up twice a year. Make sure that you can again do these things from different orders, so not just make sure your ice tables are totally down, that you know how to do change in moles, um, but also think about how would I do it if I was given KC and I had to work backwards uh, and make sure that you're happy with combining, for example, ideal gas equations with pressure in a KP calculation. Titration calculations, uh, dead set, uh, redox titrations or acid base titrations, maybe both. Make sure that you're aware about how to do things like find the MR of an unknown compound using a titration or finding the number of waters of crystallization is another really sort of very common type question. There are loads of practice ones out there, so make sure that you have practiced. Transition metal reactions, of course. Um, I don't have a particular favorite for the transition metal reactions, except to say that don't forget that aluminium is in a transition metal, but you are expected to know about the precipitates that it forms and its acid-base behavior. Along with that, while we're talking about acid-base behavior, periodicity, going across period three, trends, melting point, ionization, energy, that kind of thing. So these are the things that always come up that you need to be sure about. Uh, bonding and structure goes in with your periodicity as well when you're talking about melting point. Um, a few things that I think you should also just put maybe a little extra focus on for this year's paper one. So when it comes to transition metals, I think make sure that you know the general properties in terms of colour compounds, catalysis, um, the definitions of what a transition metal is. So this uh, forming stable ions with a partially filled D orbital, make sure you're confident that you could explain why one metal is a transition metal and one isn't. And make sure that you know those little bits about catalysis, not been in for a while, your vanadium oxide catalysis in the contact process 
um, difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous can come up in a rates question. Um, when it comes to KC and KP, don't forget your qualitative. What I mean is your descriptions of equilibrium. Don't forget like how to talk about equilibrium shifting one way or another, particularly when it comes to industrial methods like when you are comparing the temperature to use for a reaction like compromise conditions. So why you might have um, a slightly high temperature to get a good rate, even though the yield might be low, that kind of thing. Um, across period three, uh, I would just say about maybe melting point and ionization energy trends across there. Make sure you know when first ionization energy drops from group two to group three and why from group five to group six. Enthalpy change definitions. Uh, again, I sort of mentioned that with uh, the Born Harbor cycles. But yeah, make sure you know what your definitions are for enthalpy change of formation, uh, enthalpy change of combustion, neutralization, those standard things, and your bond enthalpy calculations as well. And then my final one for that, um, there's been a fair amount on weak acids and buffers, so I think we should probably concentrate and make sure that we can use KW, the ionic product of water, uh, to make calculations involving bases and also mixtures, okay? So not mixtures in necessarily in terms of buffers, although revise that too, um, but mixtures of strong acids and strong bases. So where you get like an excess of hydroxide ions after you've mixed a strong acid and a base together, being able to calculate the pH of that mixture after you've mixed two substances. Um, just a little bit on things on my website, ckchemistry.co.uk, that can help you revise in these last few weeks before your final exams or for the rest of your year if you're only in year 12. Retrieval practice quizzes, although it might feel a bit late to be doing retrieval practice, um, it's never too late to just keep topping up your knowledge. They are good low stress, hopefully, ways to just go, oh, do I know that reaction mechanism? Do I know that colour change? Do I know that definition? Um, they're all up on the website. Practice questions and walkthroughs. There's loads of free ones on the website as well. So there's little booklets, particularly the earlier stuff from year 12, like the bonding uh, and the redox and some of the organic, where there are questions that have walkthroughs with them. So the explanation videos and some calculation ones as well. And then to help you, this is more with paper three, but multiple choice questions are going to help you anyway with retrieval. Um, you can get a whole set of 50 multiple choice questions for free with video walkthroughs. Um, not many spaces left on this. On Thursday next week, the 30th, of May, I've got um, I think two spaces left on this one day course. So if you are interested in that, you need to email me, message me as soon as possible. Um, we're doing a very intensive course. If you missed it, I will be releasing recordings of that course so that you can get for a very small cost. Um, recordings of other things. So all of the A level classes that I've been doing throughout the year, where I've had groups of students in, and we've been looking at specific revision classes really aim to like bring up your grade those are all recorded and available and they also come with practice questions and they really go into the detail about the higher level exam questions so if you're trying to get to an a or an a star grade i strongly recommend that you have a look at those um, i will be doing also specific group classes for paper one paper two paper three they'll either be the day before the exam or maybe like two days before, so maybe the Saturday if the exam is on the Monday. I will be releasing details about that. All those kind of things. Make sure that you are on my mailing list and then you can find out about those. Practice papers and predicted papers. Paper one, paper two, paper three. Predicted papers are available now for download with mark schemes. You can also um, get last year's. So you can get them all in a bundle of price so that you'll have six exam papers that you can practice of things that questions you've not seen before, which is really important for revision, that you're not just doing those past paper questions that you've done loads. 
Um, and there's also an extended response booklet, which is really looking in more detail at those longer answer six mark questions. There are 22 different six mark questions in that booklet with not only the mark scheme, but also guidance on the type of words that you should be using, the mistakes that students make, key vocabulary, things like that. And you can get those in a bundle with the predicted and practice papers as well to save a bit of money. I am now just working on also walkthroughs for the predicted papers. So if you've got the predicted papers and you're a bit stuck with the mark scheme, then either make sure you're onto my um, group classes before the exam or just get yourself the video walkthroughs. And again, if you're on my mailing list, which you'll get a pop up as soon as you go to my website, then you will get details about all of these reminding you what you can get. Okay, good luck with paper one. I'm now going to record my predictions for paper two.